Campo San Benedetto. Behind me is the Church of San Benedetto. And this church is important to me today because it's where was baptized Elisabetta Caminer Tura. Uh, Caminer was her original name, Tura is her married name when she married Antonio Tura, a doctor. Uh, she is quite remarkable. She was born in 1752, and this was at a time when women were just barely beginning to be recognized as having some uh, contribution to culture, to scholarship. Uh, her father did educate her. He was a writer and a publisher himself, and so he provided his daughter with an excellent education, and she loved to study. And said, in, in fact, she wrote often about how her love for study would never leave her for the rest of her life. And in fact, she and her husband did not have children, and some researchers conjecture that this might be because she wanted to focus on her studies. Uh, one of the things she did was work alongside her father uh, with his journalism. So she wrote uh, book reviews and other things like that for the journals, and then she took over a lot of the decisions about which uh, things would be published, what would be included. She used this as a way to champion women writers. So she included a lot of articles and pieces by women writers, which she would critique. Uh, some of her critiques, sometimes she used some sarcasm and some satire because you know she couldn't be um, sort of, I don't know, mean against the, the men who were dominating the scholarship. Um, but she would write about women um, writing about fashion and saying that you know, women shouldn't focus only on fashion but should um, educate themselves and use their minds for other things. So she really strongly believed in women's education as a way for women to give back to society. Um, there were some people who criticized her who said that she should not be writing at this level because she didn't have an education. Um, you know, that she was somehow putting herself above her station. Uh, but of course, this is completely unfair because women weren't allowed to attend the university. So why should someone criticize her for this? She and her husband um, did open their own publishing house. She was the first person in um, Italy to introduce the ideas of Mary Wollstonecraft, the, one of the people credited with beginning feminism in 1792. And, uh, but because of some of this criticism and wanting to protect herself and have a more secure life, she and her husband did move to Vicenza, and that's where she died um, later in the century. Uh, but this is where her life begin, began with her baptism here at this church.